So after nearly two years of waiting, Super Dog Deception Chapter 1 has finally been released and unfortunately it is rather disappointing. Super Dog Deception is a demake of the game Dog Deception which is made by the same creator. The original Dog Deception is a really fun 3D Pac-Man style game that has you running around different levels collecting soul shards in which you use to unlock the ring altar. Each level also has different map designs, different enemy abilities, and different abilities you get at the beginning of the level which completely forces you to change the style you play the game in. Despite the original Dark Deception being rather difficult, the level designs are well made and never truly felt unfair. Unfortunately, I find that Super Dark Deception has failed in this aspect and many other aspects that stops it from being anywhere near as good to the original. But before going into that, let's first talk about what I like about Super Dark Deception. First of all, I really like the sprites they gave each character in this game. While obviously, the sprites doesn't really capture the creepiness of the character from the original Dark Deception, the sprites are still really well made. You can clearly tell which character is which, which is a good thing when you're making a demake of a game that is originally in a completely different style. I also really like the archive room and the fact that you can choose to play as different characters. It really takes full advantage of the fact that you can see the character you play as in this game, as opposed to the original which is in first person. Now unfortunately, just about everything I like ends there. Now let's get into what I dislike about this game, and oh boy, there is a lot. So starting with the game in general, I really dislike how the controls are set up. As a long time Dark Deception player, I've gotten used to using WASD to move around. The keys to use abilities are Q and E, and the keys to switch abilities is 1 and 2. The reason this control works in the original Dark Deception is because your character is in first person, meaning you can hold W the entire time and just turn with your mouse. Then your other fingers will be free to switch and use abilities. In Super Dark Deception though, you need to use all 4 directional keys to stay moving at all times. Times. Meaning if you're playing the traditional way, you have to stop moving for a moment to use the abilities, which oftentimes can be fatal. Now to be fair, you can move around with the directional arrow instead, which somewhat resolves the issue, but the control still takes time to get used to, and it would have been much better if the game let us choose our keybinds. Now the next issue I have is with the secrets. While in the original Dark Deception, while secrets aren't exactly the easiest to find, they still give you a fair chance to discover it by yourself by marking it on the map. In Super Dark Deception though, you don't get that. So the only way to find the secret by yourself is to try literally every single door you come across. I really don't know why they designed it this way. It really does nothing except screw over the players who are new to this game. Also, in Super Dark Deception Deadly Decadence, some of the soul shards are in the secret room. Why the fuck would you do that? It basically forces you to get the secret in order to beat the level, which transforms the secret from something that is optional to something that is required to beat the stage. I really don't know what the hell they were thinking when they designed it like that. Anyway, the next thing that I hate is how little you actually get to see. In the original Dark Deception, you can see enemies from pretty far away, meaning you can plan out your next move and decide what to do. But because you play from a different perspective in Super Dark Deception, you don't get to see far at all. While it's true that you can see enemies around the corner more easily in Super Dark Deception, in my opinion, it's still not that good of a trade-off. If you want to know what I mean, take a look at this clip. Yep! If you're using speed up, from the time the gold watcher first enters the screen to the time it kills you, it takes roughly 0.3 seconds. Meaning you have roughly 0.3 seconds to react. How the hell is any normal person supposed to do that? You can't even say the game is difficult anymore, it's just completely unfair at this point. Now moving on to the next and for now the last thing I hate, it's the requirement for an S rank. Now nothing is really wrong with the requirements for getting an S rank in Super Dark Deception except for one factor. The time. In Super Dark Deception, in order to get the full S rank, you need to complete the level within 10 minutes. This requirement is the same for every single level, meaning in order to get S rank, you cannot play carefully and have to play extremely aggressively. And unfortunately, due to your short ass sight range, that is impossible right now without abusing the telepathy glitch. If you don't know, the telepathy glitch is a glitch where you can make the ability telepathy permanently active. From what I've seen, every single creator that has managed to S rank the game has abused this glitch at some point during the run. You can't even blame them for it as it is currently the only way to make the game somewhat fair. 
So now that we covered what I hate about the game in general, let's go through every single level and break them down. So the first level is monkey business. Honestly, despite the fact that the monkey's AI is buffed to always cut you off, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. The same strategy that works in the original Dark Deception still works here, so honestly, there's not too much to talk about. However, there is one thing to talk about, and that is the boss fight. You see, in the original Dark Deception, you have to lure both of the chef monkeys out of the room or else the other one is gonna kill you while you attempt to get the ring piece. But in Super Dark Deception, you only have to lure one of them out of the room to get the ring piece. I seriously could have saved myself from 10 minutes of pure suffering if I had known this information sooner. Anyways, moving on to Elementary Evil. So one major difference in Elementary Evil is Agatha is actually slower than you when you walk in a straight line. And when she turns a corner, she's faster than you. I honestly have no idea why they changed her behavior to be like that, but it is what it is. The first zone of the level is actually pretty nice. The levels are balanced and you can see where Agatha is coming from. But as soon as you get to the second zone, all that that fairness is just thrown out the window. Unlike the original Dark Deception where you can kind of manipulate where Agatha teleports, in Super Dark Deception that is not the case. Agatha just kind of teleports right where you are. Every. Single. Time. And you better hope that when she teleports right on top of you that your speed boost is not on cooldown or you're in a completely straight hallway. Or else you're basically fucking dead. Now this is straight up unfair especially when you consider the fact that they nerfed the speed up in Super Dark Deception to have way longer cooldown. Now let's talk about this part where our favorite daddy demon Malik shows up and initiates a chase. So the main differences of this section in this version is Malik is actually slightly faster and you cannot go through the fake portal without using speed boost. But otherwise, this section plays out mostly the same as the original, and it still takes trial and error to find the best path to take. And now for the boss fight, and while it isn't exactly unfair like the second zone, some things can still take you by surprise, especially when you're playing for the first time. Remember when I said that you cannot go through the fake portals without using speed up in this version or else you'll die? This is due to the fake portals exploding much faster when you come into contact with it in this version. So while you're playing, this can happen. All right. Doing good, doing good. What? Also, Agatha kills you instantly if she teleports right on top of you, so... That's fun. Moving on to Deadly Decadence, and this entire level is just mental torture. In Super Dark Deception, your characters doesn't have sprites for looking up and down. It's very confusing because the statues coming from these two directions sometimes does stop, but most of the time they just come at you at full speed. And as you just saw, when you are in this situation, you have literal milliseconds to react. You want to know how many times I died by being jumped like that? Well, let's see together. Now 6 times may not seem that bad, but remember, this is on me replaying the level. And I only counted the times where I got ambushed like that, I also died to other methods plenty of times. Which leads to our next discussion, the traps. Now the spike traps are okay since they have a visual when they're about to trigger, but the main problem is the swinging traps. Now the swinging traps when going up and down is pretty okay since you can clearly see when they're about to swing. But the swinging traps on the left and right... The visual is there but it's not very clear. And when you're being chased by an enemy, you don't have time to check it, meaning if your teleport's on cooldown, you basically have to gamble your life to see if you make it or not. I really feel like they should just remove all the swinging traps since the level's already hard enough without them. And if you think I'm done with the level now, I'm not because there's one more giant headache to talk about and that is the boss fight. More specifically, the axe. In the original Dark Deception, you can easily predict and manipulate where the axe is going to land and that makes it a very fun and fair boss fight since you need the axe to hit the door three times in order to open the lock. In Super Dark Deception though, the axe is really unpredictable. Sometimes it lands where you were 10 seconds ago and sometimes it lands right in front of you and sometimes it even lands on top of you. If that's not enough, the axe also now has collision on the ground, meaning you can get screwed over by an axe that was thrown 30 seconds ago. Also, even though the axe is already on the ground, you can still get killed by teleporting into a certain area of it or running into it, so so, 
that's fun. All this factor combined made the level so unfair and bullshit that I died 28 times on my second playthrough. 28 times! And you're talking to a guy who has managed to S-rank the original Deadly Decadence in Dark Deception. Now moving on to Stranger Sewers. Now there's actually one change that they made from the original that I really like. Unlike the original Dark Deception, you can actually get onto the sidewalk this time. And you move faster on the sidewalk. Of course, to balance it out, there are pipes on the sidewalk that blocks your way, which which means you cannot stay on the sidewalk for the entire level. It's honestly a good way to add a new playstyle and strategy to a level without completely overriding the old one. Unfortunately, I hate just about everything else. For some reason, when an enemy ducky detects you, they sometimes take about 5 hours to get up and chase you, and other times they get up near instantly. Not to mention that in this version, if you touch an unactivated ducky, it will instantly kill you. While it's true that in this version, the real duckies have little details that differentiates them from the fake duckies, they can be hard to spot while you're being chased by another ducky. The range that triggers the ducky can also be very random and confusing. Other than these factors, this level is actually pretty okay. EXCEPT for one moment. As soon as you collect the last shard, every single ducky in the map gets triggered and starts chasing you along with Malik. If this is your first time playing this, trust me, you will die. A lot. If you somehow pull off a miracle and get to the ring piece, you'll soon be facing the boss. Now the boss fight in this version plays out mostly the same as the original except for three key differences. 1. The pillars you hide behind is destroyed after Doom Ducky's head attack. 2. Instead of 4 phases, there's only 3 phases which makes this fight a bit quicker. 3. Going behind the first and second pillar will cause you to instantly die to Doom Ducky so don't do that here. Other than that, this boss fight and then the chase sequence later should be nearly identical to the original original, meaning you should be able to easily beat it. Despite its flaws, it's overall a okayish level. Anyway, now that we've gone through every single level in depth, let's go to the final section. So overall, Super Dark Deception is rather disappointing. The game not only removed most of the elements from the original Dark Deception that made the game fun in the first place, it also made the game stupidly hard and unfair. Some aspect of the game is made harder even though there is really no reason to do so. The game currently sits at a mixed review on Steam and it's for good reason. Currently, I don't recommend getting the game at all as it sits at $18 on Steam and it's definitely not worth the price tag. If you're willing to pay that price, you might as well just spend two more dollars on the original Dark Deception Complete on Steam, which will give you a much better playing experience. But for now, the highest rating I can give this game is a solid 4 out of 10. It's honestly quite sad since most of the issues that I mentioned can be easily resolved by a slight adjustment. In my opinion, if they fix most of the major issues of this game, then this game can easily get an 8 out of 10. But for now, Super Dark Deception is a disappointment.